to introduce our next guest, Mr. Tim Farrell of Farrell's Voice. Yes, and Tim uh, is from Philadelphia area, so he's on the East Coast Forest, uh, who has wonderfully uh, represented that area and, and sort of pissed off the feasibility and the marketability of tropical flowers on uh, the East Coast. Oh, there he is. Good morning, Tim. Oh, you're probably a good afternoon, isn't it? What is it, Tim? Oh, what are you doing? Yeah, awesome. It's been a great weekend, and we're really, really excited to have you on board because I've known uh, Tim for many years, actually, and uh, we work side by side uh, working with Tom Flora, and uh, over those years, I've seen him, and he's a wonderful designer, as you'll see, but he's also one of the foremost, I think, one of the best educators in North America. That's how I'm going to start this discussion. Or this presentation. So, um, so what are some of the things that make you um, that sort of a fabulous weekend in that blog? Well, thank you so much for that compliment. I mean, for you, that's, that's really heartfelt. So, thank you so much. I appreciate that. Um, I, I, you know, I think that I've actually been a business almost four years, and four years I've been running business in September. And honestly, I think. What's behind it is what's behind most successful people in this business, and it's the love and the passion for both the product itself and the people in this industry. This industry is just full of incredible people with, with good hearts and with just a love for what they do. And, and I really like draw from that, and I live up that, and it, it keeps me really fresh with what I'm doing. So I think that must be a super cool for us. Well, I think that's great, but it really doesn't help if it comes from accounting. You move from accounting to forestry, right? So yeah, you know, so it's a That is exactly that's my the left side of the brain and the right side. I forget which is which sometimes, but um, that was my first love, and it was actually I was um, in the university pursuing a degree in accounting when I got a part time job in the fire business. And um, wow. And, you know, I did also love the fire business, but I do also always have those struggles in my head about making things profitable and making things beautiful as well. So it's something I, I, I do all the time, but I think it helps keep it this way. That's awesome. So let's just roll that video because I think we'll see exactly how your mind works uh, behind, behind that all that beautiful design. So let's roll the film. Hi everybody, I'm Tim Farrell and I'm so happy to be here with John Tanoy. John is a third generation nurseryman here at Greenpoint Nurseries, which is on the west side of the Big Island of Hawaii in Hilo. And, and John, I'm so thrilled to be here and to actually see the product that I use and how it's grown. So I'm drawn to this beautiful white anthurium. So tell us a little bit about the variety and maybe the stages of growth and, and what you do as a nurseryman with these beautiful flowers. Okay. Uh, well. I guess we can walk a little bit yeah. over here. So this uh, variety is probably our, uh, one of the most popular whites uh, oh. bred by University of Hawaii. This variety is called Hokuloa. You know, it's a, it's a hardier white. Usually you get a lot of bremishing, damaging from shipping and whatnot. But this uh, var variety in particular stands pretty strong in, in those characteristics. So I know I've had you ship these to me before and you pack them beautifully. Hopefully we'll get to take a look at that later. Absolutely. But they're packed beautifully. They arrive in pristine condition and, and the, the vase life on these when they come mm -hmm. from a grower like yourself to a retailer like me, it just expands the vase life like yeah. no other. So I know I appreciate all that you guys do here. And the, how many varieties do you have here at the farm? I mean, we've just passed about maybe 20 <laughs> shade houses so far, but how many varieties or about how many do you grow here at the nursery? So in about a total, about 40 different cultivars we're growing. 40? Yeah, um, I'd say 10% of that is locally um, bred by backyard growers. 90% we're, um, we use and promote the university uh, breeding materials. So we're very thankful for 
for all the breeders in the state, I'd say. But wow. UH in particular, yeah. And from what I understand, your grandfather started the business. Yes. Your dad took it over when he was ready to retire. And now he has his three sons, which your your brother, Chris, and Mark. yourself. And myself. Mark. And Mark is on the research side now. Is that correct? That's correct. So, so that's pretty amazing. Yeah. It's a great family story. And <laughs> um, it, it shows the dedication to this beautiful product Thanks, that's man. just iconic of the state of Hawaii. Um, I know as a retailer, buying American grown is very important to me. And, and sometimes we forget that Hawaii is, is, is part of part us of <laughs> and, and supporting a grower like you and allowing you to, de to deliver yes. such beautiful product to me and allow me to deliver that to my customers lets me stand out as a retailer and stand out as a floral artist. So I appreciate Thanks, everything Sam. that you do, but let's walk through the greenhouses some more and see what else you can show us and Thanks. tell us about the different varieties. Do you have a favorite variety that you're growing right now? Is there one that just is your, your baby? Um, usually green. Greens, which is uh, oh, I love the greens. Well, they, you know, they're my favorite, but they are the hardest to grow. But I would have to say the Hokulo is probably one of the uh, one of my top ones. I'd like to very easy to grow, and maintain, take care of. Okay. And, uh, very free flowering. Yeah. So in the green anthurium, I know Midori is my absolute favorite of all anthuriums. What makes that harder to grow than others? Does it just produce less flowers, or is it to, to get the perfect blooms? Is just harder to to, to happen. Good question. Uh, I guess coming from a grower's perspective, um, every variety is different. Anybody would say that. And for some reason, the greens are a little have a weaker root system, which oh, weaker root system and Ethereum makes it uh, more susceptible to diseases or okay problems. Yeah, unfortunately. Well, that's what makes them a little bit more scarce. And yeah, then on our that. end, makes them a little bit more valuable. So it becomes a more special product that if our customers can understand that, that they're not just available everywhere and yeah, that absolutely. we can yes. work with a nurseryman like yourself to bring them, to, especially to the East Coast mm -hmm. and use mm -hmm. them, that gives that product value. And it also gives somebody like me, a floral designer, value in the consumer's mind because they can't just get that anywhere. They need to come to me for yes. something like that. Yes. So it becomes a great partnership, doesn't it? Absolutely, yes. <laughs> what do we have here? These are just spectacular uh, as well. So these, these were just harvested. Um, this is a red and green obake. Uh, the variety is called Kolopani. The variation here, it's almost like a watercolor painting. If you yeah. look at the, the way the green just you know transitions into a lighter pink and then into this beautiful red, but the spath, that white spath in the middle mm -hmm. of it, just, it makes the whole thing stand out. But even, I just love like the it curve nice. of the flower. Yeah. Like yeah, some yeah, anthurium yeah. are very flat, but look at this. I mean, it just has this, you know, I was using this as a designer, just the stem, the line of the stem creates a line in the arrangement, mm -hmm. but this plateau with this curving motion, that becomes a really artistic thing for me. So I think it's great that, that designers like myself and growers like you have conversations yeah. about the different <laughs> characteristics of the flower so that we can then work together as a force to bring the best things to our consumers that we're all really happy. But Name of the variety again? Kalapana. Kalapana. It, it's just, just gorgeous. And what character that, that flower has. It's fantastic. Okay, and it looks like we have some baby anthurium plants here. Is, are they just immature plants? Are the same ones in this row down further? Yeah, yeah. You nailed it on the head there. This is, so these are just planted. They'll be, these are about maybe four or five months old. As you can tell the difference in sizing. So even though we have these plants here that are small, can you harvest these blooms and sell them? Because I know I would love to have small blooms like this for smaller bouquets. That'd sure be, thing, that'd be yeah. wonderful. Yeah, we, we do harvest them. And people so, are looking for this size, yeah. <laughs> so when a retailer is talking to maybe one of your sales representatives here, should they say I'm looking for an anthurium that's white that's maybe about two inches in diameter? What's what are the or do they say age wise like off a one year old plant? What's the best way for us to communicate size -wise. that message? Size. Yeah. Okay, give them an idea of size. Okay. But of course at this size as the plants grows, we'll, you'll get a bigger flower eventually. So it's usually a not a long period you'll get these kind of sizes. But hopefully with our planting cycle we'll be able to offer those different sizing, right? That's that's wonderful. And how about as far as timeline? Like say, for example, if I know I have a wedding, say in October, mm -hmm. and um, it's safe, it's six months out. Can I call you and say, hey, listen, I need you to save me a hundred of the white anthurium in a medium size. And do they, you pretty much keep tabs of them on the plants for us um, until they're ready to harvest? Or do you that, need to see how each crop comes in? Of course that, but if that, that's, that's a very good option. I'd recommend to people, especially, uh, yeah, ahead of time is, Always helpful for us to keep it down, jot it down on our calendars, and 
hopefully by that period, yeah, we'll we'll definitely save it for you. Yeah. That'd be wonderful. Earlier the better. Yeah, yeah, because I'm sure y you get these demand crushes. Like all of us retailers are looking for the white anthurium during wedding season, and we're mm -hmm. all looking for yeah. the red anthurium <laughs> during Christmas and Valentine's Day. So the more lead time you have, the better, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Wow. So we have beautiful reds, beautiful whites, and that beautiful transitional color mm -hmm. that we have back there. So what other colors do you have here at Greenpoint? Oh, uh, pretty much all the color palettes you can see. So we're going from uh, reds to blushes to pinks to purples, dark purples, light purples. All the colors of the rainbow. All right. So can we head to some of those shade houses and take a look at some of those other yeah, varieties and colors let's, too? Let's go take a look. That'd be great. That's so, so this is your packing facility here and the business side of the business as opposed to the growing yeah. side. And I see we're just being followed in by yeah. a truck where they've harvested some product yes, and yes. are bringing it in. And then we have all the anthurium assorted by both size and varieties in here. Mm -hmm. And this is where the salespeople will pick from for the packers. Is that... How so does that work? After it'll be coming from the field, it'll be coming into this section, and here it'll be graded. Graded, okay. And what does grading entail? Grading is, is going by size, of course, the variety, um, and also the um, first grade, second grade, or like the quality of the, the quality flower. of the flower. Okay, great. great. This is the one that we saw in the greenhouse, then, and under the this shade covers. Oh, this is different. Okay. Is different What's this one called? This this white is called Oshiro white. You'll get a bigger size um, flower. Okay. And does this travel well as also, or not as well as not the first Not as well one? as the Hokuloa variety. Okay, yeah. but it's just gorgeous, isn't it? Just, it's and a bigger white. Already sleeved and, and ready for ready finding its packed. way to a new home, yeah. huh? <laughs> okay, great. And again, the beautiful in the brown family, the chocolates. I know these are more rare too. Yes. Uh, a little bit harder to grow as well, I'm assuming, um, and take a little bit more time? No, they're pretty free flowering, actually. Good okay. base life. Just gorgeous, but even even this and looking at it, I mean, mm -hmm. it has that brown leather look when you first look, but as you get close into it, I mean, the the, the little divots the in it just give it so yeah. much more. There's so much more color here than we originally thought. So, and just again, the characteristic of this balloon, mm -hmm. just, mm -hmm. just, just gorgeous. So uh, this is gorgeous. This is gorgeous. This is a new variety, and again, pink, blushing in, and ending in the green. The just, just love this. This size is considered a medium size. Would that be correct? So this would be kind of on the verge of, uh, yeah. Medium, you gotta, okay. you got a good eye. And here's small, right here. That'll right? be something small, yeah. Uh, I love this one. Uh, again, a very more intense green mm -hmm. with the veining, with the just with the mauve veins, yeah. color in there to give it, again, just to accentuate the veins, give it a little bit more depth to the flower, but gorgeous. I mean, any green anthurium, I love, but they're, they're <laughs> fantastic. And larger variety, is it the same variety, same but larger variety. flower. This but look gypsy. at, wow, gypsy's gorgeous. I mean, that's just incredible. And again, this would be large. Uh, pushing into the large. Pushing into the large. So it's right on that, right on that cusp, edge cusp, of medium yeah, to large. Yeah, okay. yeah. So this has to be large. That'll be a large. And what's this variety? This that is, is called Sundance. And and again, the coloration, it's it's almost it's it's such a pale green, but it's a yellowy green. So it's totally different than than the green that we mm -hmm. see there. But mm -hmm. gorgeous, gorgeous shape. You know, the spath is gorgeous and that little bit of pink right on the edge to pick up on the pink in the center. That would be a beautiful flower to have. So now this this variety has a little seasonal. Um, we'll have seasonal winter, summer. We'll have different, a little bit different colors. So, so when the temperature changes here, the changes. lights probably in particular, it yes. gives it more or more less intense. color. More color as we, as we get into a cooler, okay. cooler period. Yeah. Interesting. So Interesting. Kind of neat. Yeah. Okay, my all-time favorite, Midori. <laughs> number one, uh, Midori, he got th it. This is just the best of all the to me. This is the one that, that speaks to me. It, I think this color green match with other flowers just makes everything pop. Very nice. uh, so when we pair this with either other tropical flowers or even tempered flowers, one of these, Close whether well. it's in a larger range or even just based down low, it, it's just a gorgeous, gorgeous element to add into a design. But beautiful, very sturdy stem length, but yes. again, curvy blossom and and gorgeous flowers. And you can see even here, the differences between the the medium, these are probably small to mediums, yeah, and these yeah. are definitely large, but That's these great. are That's fabulous. Great. And then we get into- These are purples, right? Yeah, so what type of anthurium is this? It, so it, this is, uh, this variety is called Lavender Lady. Lavender and, Lady. Uh, it will be of the Amnicola side, which a typical uh, Andreanum anthurium will be a heart shape, right? Okay. So anything in this tip, Tulip shape will be uh, empty. Gotcha. So it's considered a tulip anthurium if we ask for this as retailers. Yeah, yeah that'd be an easy. In, in a beautiful easy, lavender, easy. and again, just the, the spath even being a different shading than the flower, mm -hmm. but it's a nice beautifully, set. you know, beautiful part of creation that something like that just works so well together. So it, it is fascinating for me to see the variety 
and the the number sheer number of blooms that you have here and to see your team working out in the greenhouses and the meticulously working with the product and, and weeding and keeping those beds clean and really inspecting the blooms and looking mm -hmm. at what's there. Your team is fantastic. You oh, all yeah. do a great we job. We wouldn't be doing this without them. Yeah. Oh, I, I know, I know it's part of a, a bigger <laughs> picture. And then after they're here, they go to packing. So can you explain a little bit about what happens in packing? How do your people care for these to make sure that they are delivered in this best shape possible to retailers like myself? You know, most orders will be cut to order. So you always, you know, most of your flowers has been harvested within 24 hours before it's you know, shipped to you. Um, again, it'll come into our house, graded out in quality. Uh, certain colors will be sleeved for more added protection. Okay. Again, it will be shipped out again uh, that day, get it to you on the continental US in two days. So John, thank you so much for the tour. It gives me new respect of your product to see it, how it's grown in the shade houses and how it's taken care of here. Um, you, your family, and your whole team do an incredible job to bring this beautiful product to us. Um, I'll tell you what, I know we picked out some things on our tour. I can't wait to get back to the workroom and put them together for some great designs for our seminars. So thank you so much. Thanks, Sam. Look forward to working with you as always. Thank you. Thanks, John. And now we're on location in Hilo at the beautiful wedding celebration event here that is grouping florists and nurserymen together to create some a think tank where we have some great ideas that we're going to share with everybody. Um, we have this beautiful lawn setting looking out under the Hilo Bay. And in the background, you see Mauna Kea up there, which is the volcano on the island of Hilo. So we couldn't be in a better setting to give us inspiration for this Hawaiian wedding celebration event. My first challenge for this was to create a, a centerpiece for a wedding with a Hawaiian theme. And myself, I'm from the northeast part of the country. I'm from Philadelphia. So being there, sometimes we have brides that can't necessarily travel to Hawaii. So we want to create something with that theme or to give them that location uh, type of an event for their wedding. So we have to look for materials to inspire us to create something beautiful for them so that when people walk in the room, they have the feeling of it being on an island, even if they're not on an island. So to start this design, um, what I found was this, this bowl, which was created out of just uh, different cut pieces of branches and nailed together to create a beautiful textural bowl. And what I thought about was being a wedding, I wanted it to be white flowers and to be green, so it was very crisp and very clean. Um, but I needed to also tie the flowers to the container. And in doing that, I thought, what better than these beautiful coconuts? The texture, the finish, even the color of these coconuts tie in so nicely to the basket and by placing some of them in the basket itself, it gives the entire arrangement unity. So that was the starting point for this concept. I was able to procure these beautiful white king protea, just magnificent flowers. The form of these is incredible with the star-shaped petals on the outside making the circular form. But the texture of these and the contrast between the outer petals and the, the fuzzy stamens that are inside are something that just draw the viewer in. So magnificent flowers not seen very often and really making very strong statements within the design. Filling in with some of the Podocarpus and this gorgeous Song of India, we have two different types of greenery, low in the arrangement, but with both color and size difference in the leaves that are on these plants to give this design some interest. And then we put in the Monstera, one over the other. With this, we're using a spatial technique called shadowing. And shadowing for us is when we take one material and place it in a second position in relation to the first material as if it could be the shadow of the first. Say if the sun was coming from this way, working your way down, it makes a shadow. That's a spatial technique that allows the viewer to bring interest to the design, but it's also a way where in something like this, the very large surface of the Monstera, it creates a sheltering for what's underneath. So it draws your eye to what's under there. It makes the eye ride from here to here to explore what's underneath here. So it becomes a very interesting way to design to bring interest and to draw the eye through the arrangement. 
The last thing on this design was adding the beautiful failing Opsis orchids. So these stems being premium stems add value, but they also expand the space that this design is taking up so that we have this be much larger in volume, but it also adds a sense of energy where the stems just come out and almost explode out of the center and then just cascade beautifully down and make a beautiful curved line. So this is our design for a table. It'd be beautiful, I and mean, even a series of these would be beautiful on a feasting table, but you can take this idea, scale it up, scale it down, make it work for you in your shop, but it's a way to bring a little bit of Hawaii to almost anywhere on location. Sometimes the background is so beautiful that to have one giant arch or something like that may not be the best thing because you don't want to fight with the background. Having a special type of arrangement in the aisles to greet your guests as they come and to make almost a runway for the bride as she enters to the wedding ceremony is the perfect thing to do. And that's what I wanted to do with this. So we would imagine maybe making 12 of these arrangements where we have six on each side going down a shorter aisle. Beautiful radial design. The base of this is just a Lomi tray that we have a block and a half of foam in there. Covered it with chicken wire because we wanted to make sure we gave it good support. When you're working with materials that have your stems like these beautiful uh, torch ginger and the king protea, when you move these arrangements they have a uh, tendency to shift it a little bit and maybe to break apart the foam. By, so by having the chicken wire as an overlay to that, it locks those stems into certain areas so there's not a whole lot of wiggle room. So it's a great mechanic to just make sure that things that are larger are secure and can be moved when delivered or moved within the venue itself without falling apart. We started this with the insertion of these beautiful torch ginger and, and I was so pleased to come here to Hilo and to find these and they usually come a little bit closed but we can actually just take our fingers and peel back and roll back the petals a little bit to give it more of a rosette and a little bit more volume to the flower itself. But just gorgeous waxy petals to these and just a little reflex in there is all you need. But these start with the line in this arrangement. Line is one of our elements of design. We start with the line with these popping up out of the center to give you that strong up and down movement for the eye to follow. We then worked in different foliages around the base. So we're creating almost a collar around the base with some of the monstera leaves and some of the palm, um, just working around. Putting the king protea in next to give us beautiful focal areas, multiple focal areas within the design. The mass of this and that, that bright surface are really do draw your eye there. So we have, of course, the Queen Anne's Lace, which you know, has a long, graceful stem when the foliage is taken off. Um, a beautiful surface of light, ethereal flowers that will give a little bit of movement if there's any kind of wind there. But we've also taken some of the Eureka Palm. And with this, let me pull out a piece and show you with this, what if we take this one out? And you see that, that uh, if the petals or the leaves go all the way down to here, your eye follows the stem, but it rides at a different pace down the bottom when there's all these petals. If we take many of them off, like this, we just peel some of them off, and we leave just the tip of what's there you can see that as this goes into the arrangement, your eye is caught by the tip of the palm, but without the foliage here, your eye rides very quickly down the stem and into the focal area of the design. So in placing these in multiple places around there, um, it gives you some great movement in and out of the arrangement. It adds rhythm to the design as well too. And also maybe just an energy of new growth because something that just has flat or petals on the tip looks more like new growth in the arrangement, and again, exudes a sense of energy to the design that wasn't there without a slight accent, something like this. Once in a while, we really have the pleasure of having a bride that gives us creative freedom and maybe even challenges us to say, I want something really different. I want something that none of my friends had for their wedding. So if it's a tropical wedding and maybe on location in a beautiful place like Hawaii or even at home and they want that look, think about creating an armature 
that will allow you to design something that's totally unique and maybe just a real signature for their wedding as far as flowers go. With this, this is the base of what I created to make the bouquet that we're going to use in this example. This is using material from the Smithers Oasis company called Rustic Wire. And it's basically a heavier gauge wire that has a little bit of jute uh, twisted around the outside to cover it. It comes in a natural, which is more of like a raffia color. It comes in the green, and it does come in brown as well, too. But with this, we've created a bouquet handle, we'll say, which is basically it's eight sets of wire that are my wingspan, then folded in half, held together, and then twisted together to make the handle of the bouquet holder. After that, we've just created one of the handmade chicken wires that we see in many different varieties now, basically using my thumb to put in between two wires and then twisting once, twice to create the holes that we see within the chicken wire. With this bouquet, I wanted to create something that was more rounded in shape and almost will end up in a spherical shape. So in doing that, I've lessened the amount of space as we're getting outside. I didn't quite make them all the way larger as I should, I just made them a little bit larger. So it starts to close in on itself and create this more cupped kind of a feature. So that's the basic mechanic to the bouquet. And this is the bouquet that we've created with that. So as you can see, the armature, it doesn't disappear. It's not totally hidden, but it's used as part of the bouquet. It creates little areas of interest. If you look at this bouquet it's from different sides that you can actually see in and explore what's inside the bouquet holder, as well as florals that have come out and have exploded out from the center. We've accented with just some beautiful leaves on one side, the hanging amaranthus to give us a little bit of drama and a little bit of flow and just to soften some of the materials that we have there. But I love the color combination. I love the purple of the orchids paired against this beautiful fiery orange of these pink cushion protea. And I really am in love with the fact that these protea have a very flat surface as they, as they open. So it becomes almost like, like uh, stair steps for your eye to follow down from the highest point down and really down low into the design. But the finishing touch on this is all of the ends of the wires that we have, we've clipped to the size we wanted and we've actually put a hypericumbury on the end. So, so that mechanic is, is finished very nicely and it becomes these little dots of color throughout here. So in thinking, how can we take this bouquet just to another level of interest? And we can do that by continuing the structure in a different fashion. So for this, what I have created was, we'll say it's a cap or a top for the arrangement where we've not started with the handle, but we've just started making that handmade chicken wire in a very organic and irregular pattern. And we've left some tendrils very long on this. Finish them off with the hypericum berry, just a little bit of a cold adhesive glue is just enough to, to tie it in and to bind it to the jute wire that's at the end of there. And if we take this and we look at our bouquet and we say, okay, this is, okay, we'll say that's the front of the bouquet. If we take this cap and we just kind of nestle it down through the flowers and maybe just use some of these extensions that we had there already to just twist and tie this into place, we can then now have a very interesting composition that challenges the viewer to understand how this was made. Some people will come up on this and say, oh my gosh, that is incredible. How did you get those big flowers inside this structure? Almost like that ship in the bottle type of experience that we have when we see things that are created like this. So it's, it's a way for us to have our art become not only just visually beautiful because of the colors and the textures that are there, but the construction and the, um, the engineering that we bring to the table makes this something that if somebody comes up to it and they explore it, they can really dive into this and, and see more and more the more they look at it and then challenge their brain to figure out how we created something unique and something beautiful for this bride and for her wedding. This yellow and white color palette is very popular right now, and there's just an explosion of energy here between the fact that we have this beautiful King Protea in the center, 
the orchids, the ginger, and then the beautiful yellow oncidium, how they just kind of pop and flow away. It's, it's almost like an eruption of material here in Hawaii. Um, that's just a gorgeous, gorgeous uh, statement, we'll say, for a bride walking down the aisle. The interest to this bouquet is the layering of this beautiful light philodendron vine that we have just cascading over the bouquet and, and bringing your eye down and back in and crossing over materials, breaking up this field of, of white with the protea, but the strong element of the line in there and the curving motion that it makes flowing over the bouquet is a beautiful accent to all the gorgeous materials that we have. And, and I could see this being you know, carried almost along the side down the aisle and these vines with white dress next to it would be just a beautiful accent and a beautiful flowing motion in a bouquet that really has a very strong expression of artistic elements in it as well as beautiful flowers. And then we have this bouquet, which is, is, this is really one of my favorites that we worked on this weekend. And this has the beautiful uh, white alprotea and the green and white anthoriums some of the Calathea, Song of India, and a little bit of foliage. We have this beautiful monstera leaf here, but it's these tendrils that we've created out of the Oasis bind wire that really give this interest. We've taken the mini symbidiums and just attached them with a little bit of wire, wound them, and then just by using a pen or even a stem and curling it around, we create these tendrils that again have this, this new energy and this layering to the bouquet that gives us a unique look and an artistic look and something that people can only get from a professional floral designer. And every bride seems to want that Instagram moment. And with our creativity, we can give that to them by creating a beautiful structure like this. What I really wanted to do was to create a different shape. We've seen the arches so many times, we've seen the moon gate. So I, I wanted to have something different. So I sketched out the idea. I sent it to a welder friend and he was able to create for me this structure, which is almost like a ladder with this half of a moon or half crescent carved out of it. I was able to take birch branches and by putting them in horizontally at every one of the metal supports that's on the structure and then going back in between every metal support and putting one on on the vertical support, I was able to create this similar interesting trellis and then be able to attach all my floral material. The base of this is basically two vases that I was able to get at a, a home supply store. I secured them to a plain wood plank that I bought at a building supply store and then stained everything in a light color. For the floral materials, this beautiful anthurium leaf, which reminds us of an alocasia because of the interesting pattern that's on there. Just one of those as a statement in this design is enough. So other materials that we put in here, the beautiful longenberry that we got at the farmer's market, just another texture to have in here. I also wanted to contrast these, these hard horizontal lines with something soft. So by taking the passion vine and defoliating it, the line of the vine becomes very important and it softens this entire arrangement with these curving lines that it has moving through the design, even leaving on the buds of the flowers because of the color that's there. I love the Midori Anthorium and we saw them at Greenport Nursery and I really wanted to incorporate them in this piece because I think paired with the foliages, the bright yellows, these surfaces of the citrusy green in this beautiful glossy texture become so, so important and really pop out within the design. One of the other mechanics I wanted to point out was the, the vessels for the water. These little water tubes are, are basically just the, the water tubes that we use every day in the shop. What I've done was taken three of the leaves off the outside of a king protea and just use some natural bind wire so it's a little bit lighter in color than the birch to contrast that and wrap them. So even the little water tubes have this R to them that has that Hawaiian feel. They remind me of like the top of the tiki torches where you have you know the bamboo stick with the canister that's wrapped in a little bit of vine to hold it together. So something as little as these details can be so important and can create something like this that on a close scale has such interest, but on a big scale becomes a spot that people want to get to and get all of those Instagram moments.
thank you so much for joining us for this webinar. I want to extend my gratitude to Hefna for the invitation to come here and to have the privilege of working with all these beautiful flowers and the other incredibly talented designers that were part of this seminar. Thank you. 
viewers, Jen, is asking, what is the material used in your hand tied picture? Let me be more specific about that. Um, the holder of the hand tied picture. Yeah, so the first look at it is uh, the material for the smoothie device is cut and it's called rustic wire. And it is a wire that's a two gauge wire and it has a coating on the outside that would remind you of what you're seeing going around this year.
married to all these guys and have friends that have a great soul on. That, that combination, I just thought that was just fantastic. And those are the things that I really enjoy seeing. The sort of unsuspecting of a flower that doesn't appear um, to be the usual combination. I love how you stretch to do that. So, um, what, you know, what was that part of your procurement or was it something that just happened when you were there? It's something so funny that you say it exactly like that. It's done for some stuff that was like, it is a great company to go on and so much stuff I didn't forget. But one of the other designers talked about a more Italian American that had been there and thought, wow, this would be so much accent in this book. It might be so great part of the tempo world and of the tropicals. And I mean, some of the material that would be like, even just the sweet and the fruit and the stuff that kind of stuff that feels good. Fragrance. The fragrance of Mario is so different. And, you know, that is the where I think we as designers can create equal levels of fragrance. Instead of just saying, I want this to be a super million dollar thing, like, really the designers will take that element of fragrance and create with it and apply maybe the Oregonian fragrance with something that's a little bit more subordinate. And when they blend together, they make something new. And that's, that's crazy. And that's what you can do. So, yeah, it was, it was a thing that just kind of happened there. But, I I love it. When I saw that, I'm like, wow, I know that that just happened and that we can come that type of combination. Really, who would have who would have ever expected that as a recipe? And uh, that's the kind of a sense of adventure that I think we get into with playing with all these softballs and that and it's like just open up to the possibilities of potential. And you make that happen. I love that one. Uh, for that very reason, it's just unpredictable. So, the other thing is, uh, tell us a little bit about the economy of beans, because I think your final piece is really a stone space, right? You have a beautiful, beautifully built um, so architecture element of the kind of like a beans, right? And then, because you have the size, you can Thank you. 
Jesus and some of you to take those pictures for the private and personal way of these not being incredible. The flowers can be annoying and have a sad smell or whatever the hell it is. But this is the mood that's right there. That's what really affected me. When you can create a new one, you can do this. And all of a sudden, be aware of the objects where you can do that something else. It's like a good sign because that's what they want. And then think of them. The most, I mean, the most impressive thing of what is all here now is what's in the house of the house.
Okay, I'm just so encouraged by the fact that you are trying to play most topics in the book because most of our topical flowers do not have a scent. But when you combine them with the berry bells and the hydrangeas and the roses, you get the best of both worlds. That's awesome. I thank you so much, Jim. And by the way, thank you.